Okay, so, well, my name is uh, Peter Taylor, and in the whole debate about climate change and the causes of climate change, my credentials are essentially that I'm a policy analysis analyst. I'm a science policy analyst. And uh, in uh, <coughs> my former work, uh, initially for environmental organizations like Greenpeace, I was eventually taken into committees of the UN and engaged in redrafting legislation, environmental legislation. And I've worked at pretty much all levels from uh, local government, national governments, uh, the European Commission, and right up to the UN level, analyzing the science behind policy decisions. And for many years, I had no reason to question the global warming orthodoxy. In fact, uh, in, uh, for a period of about three years, I was an advisor to our own government on renewable energy strategies at, at community level. And we set up uh, uh, initiatives throughout the country as to what, how local councils and uh, local initiatives could get information on technology for reducing en uh, energy consumption and um, the deployment of renewable energy installations. And my interest at that time was to basically safeguard <coughs> the rural environment, and um, both in relation to the people who live there and the wildlife and uh, uh, the basic peace and quiet and spiritual recreation of our, of our wild places. And I came to realize that a lot of the solutions being proposed for global warming would be actually more damaging than the warming itself. And so I began to examine the models upon which these assumptions were based. And uh, quite frankly, I was shocked by what I found. I'm a highly trained analyst and scientist. And uh, from the very beginning, there was not a consensus amongst climate scientists on what was causing what we've seen. I'm not a global warming denier. There's no doubt that uh, <coughs> the planet has warmed up over the last hundred years. But uh, a number of other things have happened at the same time, not just carbon emissions. We've also had a 200% increase in the electromagnetic energy of the sun. And uh, many scientists have noticed a correlation between magnetic cycles of the sun and temperatures on the planet. And that is the area that I've, I've, I've uh, investigated. And there are significant lack of consensus among scientists. And actually, if you read into the technical working groups of the IPCC, you can see this lack of consensus. You can see it in uh, the number of scientists who've pointed out that virtually all of the increase in temperature, first of all, is not linear, it's cyclic. There are a series of peaks and troughs. Those peaks and troughs correlate with the electromagnetic energy of the sun. There are scientists working on the mechanisms whereby electromagnetic cycles can affect cloud cycles. The cloud changes are noticed by satellite data. There's other satellite data which measures the amount of solar radiation hitting the surface of the planet, in particular the oceans. And there you see increases in sunlight reaching the surface of the ocean. Many hundreds of watts <coughs> are absorbed by the ocean per square meter um, according to whether there are clouds or whether it's clear sky. The difference between the two can be 100 watts easily. The carbon dioxide effect is measured in one or two watts per, squ per square meter average. So what's happening to clouds is very, very important. There are discussions at very high levels within science on these issues. But they don't surface, they don't come through the process of advice to policy makers. Uh, the IPCC issues a summary for policy makers. And it's this upon which the politicians, and probably more important, the environmental groups, react to this supposed consensus. There isn't such a consensus.